Shalom. Welcome back to Each One Reach One, everybody. Appreciate you guys joining me today for another one. We are back. All right, let's begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh in the name of his beloved Son, our blessed Master, Savior, Redeemer, and our King, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakadash. All right, what are we covering in this lesson here? We are going to do a, a video because I feel like this is necessary, you know. You know, we got to understand that not everybody is waking up to this truth at the same rate, right? There, there are people who are newly awakening as I speak. And what happens is when we come into the understanding we, you know, of who we are, when we come into this truth, our first encounter, more often than not, is with the camps, Right? They're bigger, they're more widespread, they're more popular, they're more people sharing their videos, they're more widely known. So more, more, more people are, are, are likely to come across these camps than they are to come across say, somebody like me, right? And so their first indoctrination, their first, the first thing they're gonna learn is the camps way, the camps understanding the things, the camps are gonna push and press upon them, you know? And there's certain things that they can get from these camps that. Are, that's beneficial. There's a lot of the milk that they can get, you know what I'm saying, from, from following, following the caps. There, there's even some meat that they can get, but there's going to be a lot missing out of their diet, you know, if they're only following the caps and if they're following the caps for too long, because the caps are indeed set up, you know, to, to kind of filter you away from the, the complete truth and understanding. You, you know what I mean? That, that's just how it is, right? So, I'm going to do this video around the topic of the law, because the law is one of those things that most Israelites struggle with when they first come into the truth. What is it? How do I keep it? And am I supposed to? Because one of the first things people learn when they come into the awakening is the Old Testament. Because it's the first thing we want to do is connect with our history, right? And the Old Testament is where we go. We run to to go connect with our heritage and connect to our history. And so we begin to read that. We begin to or have somebody else teach us the Old Testament, the, the Old Covenant, right? And so, you know, you, you start hearing these people. And because many of these camps and many out here in the awakened community, they are Old Testament only Israelites or they're Israelites that do believe in the New Testament as well, but they also believe and still push that the law, statutes, and commandments are still in effect. And to that, I say no. The commandments are definitely in effect, but the laws and the statutes, not so much. You know what I mean? There's certain things. See, again, you got to be clued in. You got to get to know the most high. It comes with a lot of studying for you to know exactly what what, what he approves and what he doesn't, what he's pleased with and what he is not, what he wants from you and what he does not, okay? And it's hard at first, I get it. So I'm going to attempt here to try to, to help, you know, those people who are new into the truth to be able to have a foundation in which to begin to try to understand what they should be doing as regards to the law, all right? Again, before I say com the commandments, all commandments, are in effect, but commandments and the laws are not necessarily the same thing. It depends on who you're speaking to, and that's the thing. It can be confusing because some people will, will call the, the commandments laws, and technically, commandments are laws because anything that the Most High commands you to do, it's his law, right? But there's a difference between the law, aka the commandments of the Most High, and the, the, cardinal, uh, the carnal laws of the law of Moses right? Th those are two different things. All right. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're going to begin in Exodus chapter 13, verse one. Once again, Exodus chapter 13, verse one. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, Yahweh brought you out from this place. 
There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Abib. So Yahweh gave commandment to Moses to give to the people, right? Regarding the consecration of the firstborn. So this is indeed one of those situations where it's a law and a commandment, right? But it's important to understand context, not just to say, okay, well, there, you know, it was a law and it was a, it was a commandment given. So there it is. So now from now to all eternity, you know, the Israelites were held to this and we got to abide by this always and forever. Because this is what they, they try to make you believe that if it was instituted once, then it stands always and forever, right? It's to be applied always into all generations. But what do the scriptures say? It's very important to be an astute reader, to be, you know, in practice of understanding context, right? Context is very key, all right? So he just finished giving, you know, the guidelines, the instructions, the law of consecration of the firstborn, right? Well, let's see what it continues to say regarding this, right? And it, verse five, and it shall be, and it shall be, meaning it's gonna come to pass, right? When Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Stop. Did you get it? Did you get it? See, so before they came into the land, they were given instructions about what they would do when they came into the land, right? So it's going to be some out there who try to tell you, no, 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 well, we got we to gotta do this always because it's the law. But what did the scripture say? What did Yahweh say? What instructions did he give, did he give to, to Moses? It shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. He's given these instructions. This is something where the people were supposed to do when they were brought into the promised land. This isn't something you're supposed to do for all eternity. This is something we were supposed to do when we were brought into our promised land. Right? Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahweh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with, all, with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, this is done because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Listen. Listen. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes and Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. Yahweh's law might be in thy mouth, right? For with a strong hand hath Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it thee, that thou shalt set apart unto Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast, which thou hast, the males shall be Yahweh's. See, it says, and it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of of the Canaanites, that you will do this, okay? And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, what is this? that thou shalt say unto him, by strength of hand, Yahweh brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage. 
And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. See, the purpose of all this was the Most High was establishing a tradition of, cer of certain customs that the people would do as a way of remembering his deeds, his kindness, his acts of love to his people. We don't need to do that in this time for that. We have the scriptures. We are able to read and remember. We don't need to do all of those different customs in order to remember. It's right here at our fingertips. We just need to read the book. They didn't have this book and these writings back then. Right? Because they were newly formed and newly brought out of the land of captivity. So all of this was happening live in real time for them. There was nothing for them to read back on to refer to in order for remembrance, right? But we have this book now. We have something. We don't need to keep all of these customs. And we, weren't to we aren't told to keep all of these customs right now. This was told to them, for, to for them to do when they were brought into the land of promise, right? Verse 16, and it shall be for a token upon thy hand and for frontless between thine eyes. For by strength of hand, Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt, right? It should be for a token upon thy hand, something to help you remember, right? Verse 17, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that the Most High led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For the Most High said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But the Most High led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, the Most High will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor a pillar of fire by night from before the people. All right. Deuteronomy. Chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse, come on, oops, Deuteronomy chapter 12, Deuteronomy chapter 12, verse 1. These are the statutes and judgments, the law, statutes, and commandments are in still effect. Listen, these are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which Yahweh, the power of thy fathers, giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Right? See, this was for those people back then in that time. That's why it's specific that, that he says, these are the statutes and judgment which ye shall observe to do in the land which Yahweh, the power, power of thy fathers, giveth thee to possess it. We are not in the land that Yahweh gave to our forefathers for us to possess it. So this is not for us. And it says, all the days that ye live upon the earth, it was for them back then who lived in the land of promise that they would do all these things Observe all of these laws and these statutes and these judgments for as long as they lived upon the earth in the land of promise. Okay. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, begin at verse 12. And now, Israel, what doth Yahweh thy power require of thee? but to fear the Lord Yahweh thy power, 
to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. See, so again, he's talking very specifically, okay? Listen, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahweh's, thy power, the earth also, with all that therein is. Only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. For Yahweh, your power, is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Listen, listen, because I wanted to cover this because, you know, if you come into the truth, listening to the caps, there's a certain hateful rhetoric that you're going to hear all the time, right? And these men in these camps, they don't have any balance, right? In, in the way that they preach, in the way that they teach, right? Or in the way that they feel themselves personally, right? There are those of the other nations who we are righteously to hate. But then there are the others of the other nations who we are not allowed to hate just because they aren't Israel. See what I'm saying? But these caps, they will lead you to believe that you're supposed to hate everybody that's not Israel. That's not what Yahweh says. We're not gonna, we're not gonna harshly enslave everybody of the other nations, although they all will become our inheritance. But the way we deal with them will not be the same. There's levels to it. Most high, he promised, right? That all those who blessed Israel, they would be blessed, and all those who cursed us would be cursed, right? That's the most high's word. That's his promise to us and to the other nations. Saying, if you be good to my people, then I'm going to be good to you. But if you're not good to my people, however you deal with them, I'm going to deal with you double. Right? Listen to what he says. Okay? Let's, yeah. For Yahweh, your power is the power of God's and the Lord of Lords, and a great power, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, and giving him food and raiment. So he, so he told you about himself, right? Those how he loves the stranger, the, the stranger that so joins with Israel, those who cling to us, those that love us, because you got that now. You got people right now that are not Israel, but they love us, man. They, they, they really love us as a people. Not everybody to a person hates us. Now, you can say the majorities of people groups hate us, but not everyone to a person. And to those people of the other nations that actually love us, the Most High has love in his heart for them because they love his children. So then he gives a commandment. Love ye, therefore, the stranger. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. He's teaching us on how to be better than the other nations. When we were strangers in the land of Egypt, they treated us like shit. He, they hated us. They dogged us out. There was no fairness, no righteousness with them because they hated us. So he's telling our people, now that I brought you out from that and I'm bringing you into a land of your own, all of these non-Israelites that follow you and they coming into this land with you because they love you, you better be good to them. 
They follow you because they love you. They want to be with you. They'd rather be with you than, than in that other land with their own people. They, co they, clo they chose to be with you. So now he's teaching his people on how to be better rulers than the people who ruled over us. Right? Thou shalt fear Yahweh thy power. Him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. All right. So again, this is important because they will have you out here trying to treat everybody the same. And that is not how the Most High gets down. It's not. Don't be of the same spirit as them because it's not pleasing to him. Now, again, there are those of the other nations who we can righteously despise, right? And want to have nothing to do with, but that is not every single person. And he has not given us a commandment to hate and despise every single person just because of their nationality. He didn't tell us that. That is something that men come up with. That is not from the Lord. We have been given no such commandment. So if you hear that, that is a commandment of men. Do it not. Right? So there's so many scriptures that I can go into to show you, you know, break it down and show you that most of the laws that we were given, what we call the law of Moses, these are all laws given to us to adhere to when we were in our own land. We cannot live by all of the laws we were given under the law of Moses while we, were, while we are living in the land of our captivity. We can't because a lot of our own laws will put us in direct conflict with the laws of the land. And he told us, obey the laws of the land because they come from me, he said. But then you'll get these people telling you, no, 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 no. Well, you gotta, do the, you gotta live by the law of Moses. Well, how if we're not in our own land? When you're in your own land, you can live by your own laws. You can do that. But when you're not in your own land, you can't do it. They make no sense. Don't let them vex you with the stupidity. They're wrong. And you'll get a lot of them trying to tell you, well, you know, um, only, only the, the law of sacrifice was done away with at the cross. It doesn't say that in the scriptures. There's nowhere in the scriptures that it says, only the law of sacrifice was done away with and everything else you must adhere to. It does not say that. It says the law was put away. He fulfilled the law. He fulfilled everything that was written of him aforetime. He fulfilled it. The law had to be done away with because under the law, we transgressed. Sin is the transgression of the law. In order to stop us from being sinners, he had to remove the law. not the portion of the law that existed for after we transgressed. It makes no sense. Think about it. Think about it. How does he save us from the law? Believe, believe the things, the very things in place that cause us to sin and transgress in the first place. How does that make sense? That he would remove, that he would leave in place all the things that cause us to offend him to go astray of the laws, but then take away the one part of the law that allow us to make, make it right and get back right with him? How does that make sense? That would make him an unrighteous power, an unrighteous God, a foolish one at that. I wouldn't dare say that about my power. Y'all better understand what you're, what you're saying even without saying it, when you say the certain things that you're saying, it's pure idiocy. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. All right. And while we're here, I'm gonna I'm gonna get this because you know this is another one of those things you hear the brothers out there. So for you brothers who are out there, because they're gonna hit you with this, they're gonna see you, they're gonna see your bald head, and then they're gonna get on you. Oh, you got the bald head, the bald to the most house gonna kill you. He's gonna kill you. You cut your hair. You trimmed your beard. He's going to kill you. They sound like runaway slaves, right? 
trying to make you scared, want you to have a fearful spirit the way they have a fearful spirit, right? They just want to lord over you. They want to lord over you. They want to have all of these different things to have over you. They want control. It's a power trip, right? But let's see. Let's see what, what, the, what the scriptures say. Let's get Leviticus chapter 21. First thing you see, regulations concerning priests, right? AKA the Levites, right? So these, this ordinance was for the Le Levitical priesthood, not for all of Israel. And as we know, the Levitical priesthood has been done away with. That means this no longer applies to any of us. They don't exist anymore. And on top of that, we were told many times in the scripture, he would tell people, to, that people would be forced to have to shave their head as a sign of mourning when they were in mourning. Shave, head shaving was a sign of mourning. So how on one hand can you say, uh, never shave your head ever, 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 never, ever, ever, never, ever, 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 never. But then on the other hand, say, do it as a sign of mourning. Make no sense, right? There's a contradiction. It's not a contradiction in the scriptures. That's a contradiction in understanding. The most high is not the author of confusion. Men are. Leviticus 21 and 1. And Yahweh said unto Moses, speak unto the priest, the sons of Aaron. And say unto them, there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but for his kin that is near unto him, that is for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother and for his sister, a virgin that is nigh unto him, which hath had no husband for her, may he be defiled, but he shall not defile himself being a chief man among his people to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Who? All of Israel? No, the priest. Context is everything. Don't let them bully you with your lack of understanding. Study to show thyself approved because they're, they're kicking people's asses all day long, vexing them with this right here. Telling you, oh, you can't bald your head because he's, this is a message to the priests. And again, we no longer have a Levitical priesthood in our nation right now. So this applies to nobody. This is an old law that was very specific that isn't even in it's not possible to be in effect to this day, right? They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. See, they'll tell you that too. Oh, you shave the beard. Nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy unto their power and not profane the name of their power. For the offerings of Yahweh made by fire and the bread of their power, they do offer. Therefore, they shall be holy. Who? The Levitical priests. They, who? The Levitical priests shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane. Neither shall they take a woman, shall they take a woman put away from her husband. For he is holy unto his power. He, who? The Levitical priest. Thou shalt sanctify him, therefore, who? The Levitical priest, for he offereth the bread of thy power. He, say it with me, he who, the Levitical priest, shall be holy unto thee, for I, Yahweh, which sanctify you, am holy. And the daughter of any priest, see, still, see how it's still talking about the priest? And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father. She shall be burnt with fire. And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil was poured, 
and that is consecrated to put on the garments shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. What? Right? What did he say? And upon whose head the anointed oil was poured and that is consecrated to put on the garments. Who is this? The Levitical priesthood, right? Right? And so now for you, for these people out here who call themselves being the Levitical priesthood, right? Although you can't have the priesthood and that there's no temple or any of that, that's out. But let's just suppose for a second that their priesthood exists, right? They're telling you this law, all of this exists. They got to adhere to this. Answer me this. How many of them, and I guarantee you, there's at least a few of them, a good, a, a good amount of them, right? If they're old enough to have children, they have daughters, right? Their daughter is out living the life of a two-third, playing the whore and profaning her father, right? How many of them have burnt their daughters with, with fire? That's the law. That was what the, that's what that's what the judgment was of a daughter who 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 went out and whored around. She she her father's a priest, and she brought shame to her her father the priest by whoring around town. She her judgment was to be burnt with fire. How many of these dudes calling themselves Levitical priests, who I bet somebody that's close to them know for a fact that they have a daughter that's running around loose? How many of them have burnt their daughters with fire? None of them. Not a single one of them, right? See, they want to try to hold you to certain laws and certain things, right, that they don't adhere to, right? If the law is still in effect, why aren't, why aren't we killing homosexuals and, and, and witches and, and, and women who commit adultery and everything else that, that we did under our laws? How come we aren't doing all of that? If the law is still in effect, that means you're all sinning. Everybody is sinning because nobody is, about, is doing all of these things which was commanded in the old law of Moses. You see how, how idiotic it is, right? You can't do that because if you were to obey those laws and do those things under this time, you'd be in prison. You'd be on death row, right? Right? <laughs> All of us, all of Israel, we'll all be on death row out here trying to live by the old laws and customs that they try to tell you are still in effect and still apply to this day. It's madness, people. I'm telling you, pure damn madness. Right? Neither, verse 11, pick it up in verse 11, neither shall he go in to any dead body nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary nor profane the sanctuary of his power for the crown of the anointing oil of his power is upon him. I am Yahweh. And he shall take a wife in her virginity. All right. So again, I'm going to ask how many of these dudes calling themselves the Levitical priests have a wife that was a virgin when he met her? I'm willing to tell you, none of them. <laughs> it, is, it is my best guess that not a single one of them has a woman that was a virgin when he met her. So he's in error. He's in sin, right? He's not abiding by the law. A widow or a divorced woman or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife, right? So then how many of them that, if, they, if there is any of them out there that has a woman who's a virgin, how many of those, those men can they 100% say that their wives were, were Levites? or Israelites, right? Neither shall he profane his seed among his people, for I, Yahweh, do sanctify him. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto Aaron, saying, whosoever he be of thy seed, meaning if he's, a, if he's of Aaron's seed, that means he's a Levite, right? In their generations that have any blemish, 
let him not approach to offer the bread of his power. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach, a blind man or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed or broken-handed or crook-backed or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scabbed or hath his, his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron no man does the seed of Aaron see the thing it's all about the seed of Aaron is all about the Levitical priest. No man of the seed of Aaron, no, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me get that again. And no man that hath the blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of Yahweh made by fire. He hath the blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his power. He shall eat the bread of his power, both of the most holy and of the holy. Only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, right? We have no veil to go into, no altars to go to, right? So this can't be talking to you because you're not a people who are living in the day when we have a temple, right? So how can this be for you? How can it be for all generations, right? It just makes no sense because he had the blemish that he profaned not my sanctuaries for I, Yahweh, do sanctify them. And Moses told it unto Aaron and to his sons and unto all the children of Israel. Right? So that right there was just a little bit of something to get into just to show you the inaccuracies of the things that these men are teaching out here. They're teaching falsely. These things have become the doctrines of men. This is not the doctrine of the Most High. This is not his, these are not his commandments to Israel right now. It is impossible for us to live under the law. It is completely possible to abide by all of his commandments, different things. I pray that you guys are all edified by this and you got some understanding from this that you weren't given from these camps. Let us give all praise, all honor, and all of the glory to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Wahabra Kakadash. I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay tuned. Shalom.